Morning everybody, hope you're doing really well. What a glorious morning today, I mean Derbyshire. And uh, I'm off to explore another cave, because, you know, when you're up north, they've got some pretty good ones, even the smaller ones. And that's what we're doing today, we're exploring a smaller one, known as the Hermitage. So I want you to come along with me, and let's just, let's just be nosy. Should we do that? Come on. So what's really amazing about this place is that because it's sandstone you know that within the small vicinity there's going to be a lot more and if you look up here as we're walking parallel to the cave which will be up very soon whether you can see that or not but there's some beautiful discoloration of some very well worn out sandstone and it's sort of hidden within the trees and this beautiful outcrop that's here and it's so refreshing to see because obviously from where I live as I've probably mentioned to you before the Ardenai sandstone outcrop which is a huge outcrop that we have in Kent going towards East Sussex it's always a nice feeling when you come outside of that and you see it and there here we are this is our first indicator, it says Hermit's Wood. There you go. And there's our little Hermit's Cave. Oh, I love it. So what does it say? I'll read it to you. <laughs> we'll just do that. It says, uh, Hermit's Wood is probably a fragment of the original forest cover of Derbyshire. It's basically a dry acid mixed deciduous woodland on a steep sandstone scarp slope which we've just funny enough just talked about about 60 species of flowering plants including both varieties of lime tree and their hybrid 24 species of birds and many fungi have been identified in this wood the hermitage was excavated around 11:30 by a derby baker who had a vision to worship god here at deepdale it is a scheduled ancient monument and it is likely that the western end was the hermit's chapel as there is a niche in the wall for a cross and candles and the eastern end formed his living accommodation so we've got to remember that when we're having a look with a lean to the shelter outside note the square holes from the rafters in the rock face i'm sure we will later at about 11:50, he moved down to the hill and be built a chapel with living living accommodations i can't talk forming the first part of the present Dale Abbey Church. The southern part of the attached house was originally built in 1480 when the Abbey, founded around 1200, developed and extended the Hermit's Chapel for its use as an infirmary with an internal connecting door. The church house was rebuilt and the northern part added in Victorian times. For many years it was a pub, the Blue Bell Inn. Be aware of unprotected cliffs and steep slopes. Please keep to the paths. We know all that. So that's basically your history lesson. And apparently we are here. And that literally gives us no indication whatsoever. Apparently we're here. Deep Dale Church is around the corner. It doesn't say where the Hermitage is, but it should be there. I'm assuming that's Hermitage Wood Hermitage. Yeah. We should make it a bit clearer. And then All Saints Church. But this is obviously what we are here to see today. So... Let's keep going down. I think we've got to go up here, haven't we? Right, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think I can see it. Yeah, I can. <laughs> oh, wow. See, again, I'm doing that. I'm saying, oh, wow, and you can't see it. Look at this. <laughs> oh, isn't that special? So, obviously, on my channel we've covered similar ones. In fact, we've done a couple in Hastings and we've done Anchor Church, which isn't too far away from here. 
and uh, here's another one to tick off the list the hermitage wow it's not big we expected that but isn't that just brilliant wow i want to have a look at this scheduled ancient monument there you go see it says about the baker in derby called cornelius had a dream in which the virgin mary told him to go to dipdale the old name for this place and worship god the baker responded to god's call and came here dug the cave in the hillside and lived in it for 20 years how many years to have been divided into two parts the western near end was probably a chapel a niche i think that's isn't it for a cross and candles and the eastern further end was the Hermitage is a living accommodation. Outside, high in the rock face, are some square holes, suggesting that there was once a lean to shelter, possibly for a few animals. He obtained water from the hermit's well. There you go. And then, yeah, we spoke about it before, 1150, the hermit moved out down the hill and built an oratory. Small private chapel. Well, there you go. That's just something special, isn't it? So you can see there's some brick there. And we saw that anchor church. And there's some holes there. I'm blown away. It's, it's, you know, like I said, you can see similar things all the time, but to actually come here and experience it, I haven't got a torch room, I'm afraid, so you're going to have to part with it being quite dark. Can we get that through? Hang on a minute. Let's get the old torch out on my camera, on my um, phone. Is that going to work? That work. Wow, look at that. Nice little shelf. Isn't that brilliant? Oh, I'm in love with this place. And there's something very um, calming about it. I can't, I can't put my finger on it. it, it there's a sort of very beautifully calming atmosphere that's here. And obviously with all the nature as well, it's, it's not like other places I've been to before. This one seems to really be attached to nature oh look at that that's the cross wow look at that the fact that still survives isn't that just brilliant oh wow oh this is amazing and it's all right and it's so not what I was expecting in terms of its atmosphere or anything like that. There's a real serenity here. And you can hear the wind blowing through the trees and it's just so magical about this place. And I don't know why. That's just something special. I was, um, it was one of these walks today, I was debating whether to give you a history lesson proper or to just talk you through it really. But I think we've done a good job just talking through it, haven't we? There you go, look. Towpath. Village on the right. W. Peck Hill. I don't know. I mean, I can't, I can't begin to know what that would stand for because obviously I'm not local. So forgive me all the local people out there because I don't know what that would abbreviate to. I just want to walk around here just to show you that we are on this sandstone ridge. Cool. That's some steep steps that we ain't doing today, people. Oh, but it's so worth it today. The na nature's really come out as well. Absolutely glorious. Yeah, you have to, if you're in the area, you have to come here. And it's strange, like I said, it's not the biggest sandstone cave that I've ever been to. And yet, the moment you arrive here, there's just some form of serenity. There's parking as well, and it probably took me about 10 minutes to walk here. So, 
you know, <laughs> in terms of walking, I think we're going to be okay for like not breaking a sweat <laughs> to get here. But look at this. Oh, it's just beautiful. There's another little cross there. Oh, this is so nice. I wonder if anybody has actually camped over here at night. You always sometimes see remnants of stuff like that, but cool, it would be a perfect place, even though it's an ancient, it's a scheduled monument, so I don't think it's, to be fair, thinking about that, what I've just said might sound a bit stupid, because it's, yeah, you know, it's a scheduled monument, you want to keep it as, you know, because there are, you know, there are respectful people out there who camp, and they take their little home with them, and they do anything excessive, but, well, you know, use it for its intended purpose, the actual hermitage, the hermit's cave. Well, I am in love, absolute love with this place. It's weird because, because it's such a short walk, you don't feel like you've earned it. <laughs> Does that make sense? Sometimes I always sort of say like, you know when it's a good explore because you the journey that you take, okay, it's taken me a long, all right. Excuse the fact it's taken me about three hours in the car to get here. Ignore that. It's the fact that when you arrive here and then you do that eight minute, 10 minute walk, I mean, come on, you know, it's, <laughs> you take all that into consideration and maybe you have earned it a little bit. Oh, this is this has honestly made me so happy being here. It's just this. I cannot describe to you this atmosphere of just pure. It's not even in a spiritual way. There's just this some beautiful serenity to it. You know, you don't normally. Sometimes you'll get to places and you'll think, "Oh, this is a bit dark and menacing," but this is totally the opposite. And I'm glad. You know, it makes a really makes a change when you arrive at a place and it doesn't feel like it's sort of something bad's happened here or anything you know it's there's a definite serenity to it and I, abs I, I, I adore it right <laughs> amazing as I stand inside this truly just magical place it's rare that I say that on the channel so it must have some spiritual significance why it's so so just brilliant and again it's the size of it it makes me laugh these smaller sites always seem to be just so magical compared to sometimes larger sites where you can lose yourself this is that wonderful little condensed size where you can just really absorb it and the nature the, the birds are flying down they're getting their morning breakfast oh it's just really something special about this place it really is and all these little indentations that have been carved out i'm assuming probably for maybe some form of subtle door passage you never know you can see them here look oh can you <laughs> i'm saying that sorry about that it is very dark in here there's some little holes there there you go sometimes we've seen that they'll put like a wooden sort of uh they'll sometimes just put a plank of wood across or something like that to almost act as some sort of door or something but who knows on this but it seems to be on every single one of the main sections look oh look at that little heart oh wow you know the only sadness that I will always have is that I know that I've come here on my own and there's always that debate you know of like I, I can say to you if you're if you're a traveler who's on their own and they sort of go exploring on their own it has its good points and it has its negative points and I, and I think one of the one of the negative side effects of that is that because you're on your own you have no one to share it with 
you don't have a partner, you don't have a girlfriend, you don't have a boyfriend, you don't have a family even that you can potentially share this moment with. And I think that's the downside of it when you're on your own. And I think it's something that I always say to people, if, if you get the opportunity to explore places like this, bring a friend, bring a girlfriend, boyfriend, even a family member, just bring someone with you because it's moments like this that you'll treasure for the rest of your life. And, and even though I record this for my own posterity, I can safely say that probably by the time I get back in the car, it won't feel the same as if I was with someone. But it will still feel special in its own unique way because I've travelled here and I've experienced it. You know, and always, you know, it might be a might be a story for another day when we visit somewhere similar again. And you know, the fact of the impact of loneliness and obviously affecting your mental health. And obviously, when you're experiencing these places, it's a totally different vibe. But let's just enjoy it for now. And uh, yeah, <laughs> well. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to sit down and going to chill out. And uh, yeah, so we talked about the history of it. Um, we've explored it for its size. And uh, yeah, I'm going to sit down and chill out. Just enjoy the sound of nature. It's a beautiful day today, and uh, I'm just going to just going to spend the most of my time here. Thank you so much for coming along with me in the immortal words of Phoenix History. Because history matters, doesn't it? Just. Um, love to all of you out there. Feel free to spread the word of the channel. You don't have to. You don't even have to like it. You can dislike it if you want. Whatever you feel you want to do. <laughs> but yeah, because history matters, I'll see you all very soon. Much love to all of you out there. Take care and uh, stay safe. See you later, everybody. Ready? Come on in. Cut the house.